My name is Peter Deng from Africa Community Education and Africa World Education Company. Uh, what we are doing today is a conference. And the conference, the important of this conference is bringing uh, different presenters from different institutions. And they will be talking about the issues facing the community in Australia. And we will take also the feedback from the community at the end of the conference. Speaker, you've already met, uh, Dr. Ajak Dwani Ajak, who will be speaking on the dangers of misrepresenting statistics to influence moral debate, biases on media reporting of crime, crime statistics in the state. A Master's of Enterprise Management from Melbourne Business School, a Master's of Mining Engineering from the University of Melbourne, and a Graduate St Certificate of Applied Statistics from Dr. Ajak is the Founder and Director of Dufuco Consulting, which specialises in mining and data analytic companies. And because of his values and experiences, he's also put them to use in working with uh, people of refugee background and people in crisis and has been an organiser of many community initiatives. We welcome Dr. Ajak. When you become older. But for people like me, whose birthday is defaulted to the birth of January each year? A birthday is just a number. It's merely a number. And because I was born in a situation where the significance of it is not emphasized, the contact around that number diminish with the culture. And that is exactly what the statistic is. Without the contact, a statistic becomes a mere number and it will not withdraw a meaningful benefit out of it. And that's why I want to have to look this afternoon about the dangers of putting statistics out without contact around it. Because to different people and to different cultures, the same number might mean different things. So we have two things to achieve here. And I'm going to look at the number, the statistic that has drawn a lot of controversy in the recent time, the crime statistic. And I will look at it at the, from the perspective of a statistician, what it means and what learning. So as the community, I think we have an opportunity to learn from that statistic. And as a service provider, you will identify your client from that statistic. So we, are, <clears throat> we will look at what it means when you put a contact with crime statistic and how the media has misused it or misrepresented or hyper the statistic to create sensation from it. And the vice repetitive uh, negative media coverage of the Sudanese. When you forbidly report the statistic, when you misrepresent it, you are not only causing a danger to the ethnic minorities, but you also squander the opportunities and the learning that people could take from that particular statistic. And therefore, we as a community, did we learn something from that crime statistic? Because the movement it was misrepresented. We fail, targeted, we fail, humiliated, and indeed we did. But at the same time, did we learn anything from it? <clears throat> and whenever you dismiss the statistic, then it will become a minor. Now, this is a crime statistic. It's nothing new. You have seen it. That's how it looks. And the crime statistics look at the top 10 ethnic communities in Victoria. It is in public domain from the crime, uh, uh, from the crime commission in Victoria. And it said that 71% of the crime were committed by Australia. And then less than 0.4% were committed from Iran. If I ask you a simple question, who are the bad guys from this statistic, the way it is presented? And then to us as a community, we were like, oh, we are 1% of the crime. Therefore, just looking at absolute values without putting contact to it, you could say, oh, we are not the bad guys. We're 
persuade another about that. You could simply put that argument. And that argument will diminish what you would learn. What I'm saying here is that I'm not saying we are good, neither am I saying we are bad. But what I'm trying to emphasize is how can a statistic influence decision and how can it be misrepresented and what opportunities can you learn? So I'm saying if you look at it from this perspective, you say that we might look good, we are one percent, but we are not, in the sense that if you put a contact to it, we need to look at both relative and absolute numbers and see the two questions. What was count and how was it counted? What gives you 71% and what gives you 1%? <clears throat> now, this statistic as well came from the same commission, crime reporting from the crime statistic in Victoria. It look at the age group, but without even going deeper into it, are the community leaders, as the social services providers. You could see that from the age group. That's what I say, you could see your clan there. Below the age of 24, at the community, I would be very concerned as a Sudanese. And my view when I use the word Sudanese, as mentioned before by Dr. Sal, the our Australian Bureau of Stat uh, Statistics are not categorized them properly. It is only the 2016 census that they started splitting into South Sudanese and the Sudanese. And some Sudanese end up still ticking Sudan, some tick South Sudan. So for you to have a, a better look, you have to combine it as a whole group. And the Australian Bureau of Statistics at the same time, they, they are like a leading reporter, indicator. Uh, no, they are lagging behind the, <clears throat> the immigration department, as Dr. Sarah said before. So it is a lagging indicator. So the number, but it is the official number that the government used when they are framing policies. So for me to convey my message, I just stick to it. Just take it that way and then look what it means to you. So if you look at it there, you could see that our young people are overrepresented in that sense. But it's still, let's look at relative numbers. What does that mean to us? Even though we are 1% of the total crime, it means people who are below the age of 24, when we'll sum the number later, in this country, of the, social, of the Sudanese and the South Sudanese origin, are the one in big problem. They are pulling through the crowd. And if, if you look at <clears throat> the arrival in this country, I could possibly say that majority of those young people were born in this country. They don't know Sudan. Neither do they know South Sudan. Therefore, what can you learn as a service provider? The reason I say that your client, most of them would have been born in this country. So maybe something is failing them in this particular country which is their home. Because those who were born in South Sudan are like my age group. But this young generation below the age of 24, if you look dead back from arrival, it means anyone born between 1990 something, was born in this country in 1996. <clears throat> Therefore, let's look at it. Now I put a contact to it. As I asked you before, remember, who is bad? Between 71%. Let's look at it relatively. Well, Australia may be 71% of the crime, but how many of them? In this, in this state, there are like 4 million with Australia. But how many South Sudanese? Based on the Australian Bureau of Statistics, and I'll do it with a disclaimer, it might, our numbers might be lesser than the Department of Migration. If you say for every 1,000 men, for every 1,000 men, and as someone in academia, we don't lie with numbers. So you present the fact. It may hit me hard, but I have to present the fact. For every 1,000 people, it means from being 1% here, looking good, as a community, what did we learn? And that's what I want to emphasize. We miss the opportunity to learn. If you are present by 1,000 people, 
It means we have 93 offenders that take us from where we look good straight into bad. And the Iranian who are looking good from that statistic move up the ladder. And the Chinese, which were like 0.9, became the good guy. For every 1,000 Chinese, there are four alleged offenses. So what am I saying? The 24 years and younger in this country, which were born and of South Sudanese origin, something is missing. There's a missing link. The system is failing them and is making every South Sudanese look bad. And I'm happy to present today because there will be a group of young people from Perth. And you will see our government free him. But they have a very wonderful title that we know what we want. And two of them are sitting here. And they will present that presentation. Because something is missing. That is what I'm asking the senior services uh, group and those who engage with them. And looking at it from a statistic perspective, what are we missing? So, <clears throat> when you look at what the media did, but though the media just misrepresented in a way, they, they do two things. The learning will be made from a statistic, but at the same time, they create fear. And instead of focusing in substance prohibition, they create fear, and that fear can end badly. And, and the case of Liab Gone has been referenced in academia. Those who are actively researching the impact of media, they would have referenced this and you would have read it in 2007. And that was at the peak of media reporting. Now, I look at why is the media actively repeating the same stories every now and then? It comes to the way your brain operates. I'm not a psychologist. But you will know that when something is repeated often, it creates a belief system. And that's why, for those of us who are in Christianity, the reason you go to church every Sunday, the same message is repeated about God. And that's how your faith grows, and you believe it. So the media keep repeating the same story. They, I'm a Christian and I'm a lay minister in the church. So, I'm licensed in this country. So what happened is this, the media repeat the same story. So the fear developed about you. And that's why it ends up in a tragic end. So what they say is this, if I teach you today what they call a super memo, uh, a super memo model is that, if I repeat the same message which I'm saying today, in the next 10 days, you will retain that information. Your memory will be 90%. If I repeat it within 30 days, you will even retain almost slightly below 90, but above 80s. And if I do the same message within 90 days, your memory of the message will be complete. So by media repeating the same story, the Sudanese gang, the bad guys, then you will be able to retrieve the information and the stability of your memory about that message is retained. Now, <clears throat> What I did, as I mentioned, we do the data mining, and it's one of the services I've given. So I, the, the website, the internet, is a full of resources, it's a, a worldwide database. So we use a Chrome web uh, scraper, crawling, and look at all the media articles, the digital content, the TV, what has been covered about Sudanese gang. The same issue. And you see in 2007, when the tragic death of Liam Gorn happened, there were 222. And the other people in academia have confirmed this as well. They, they arrived at the same conclusion. Over 200 yep, were done. And those over 200 built a bit of anti immigration kind of message. The sentiment towards Sudanese was bad. And if you look at closing, the media tend to cover things and the fear repetition happened during election cycle. All the 
this reporting period, there were one or election, either before or during that. So, to conclude, as I mentioned before, how does it influence? If you look at the first phase of this graph, this is a statistic from the Australian Bureau of Statistics. It, it would say it over 27,000, as Dr. Saras uh, said before. This is from ABS. So, during the first phase, in the 1990s, I look from 1996 all the way, the media, from 1996 to 2005, the media was favoring the Sudanese. All the messages going out were very good about us. So our immigration intake, the inflow was high. The numbers could be up, down, here and there. But look at the big picture as I finish. But it's starting from 205 all the way. The white line is the media increase in negative media. And the green line, the green line is the intake. So that's why I said before, it's statistics very important back from that. And my message here today, as Sudanese community, what can you do? The intake coming in, when the media turn against us, then the intake decline. I'm not saying it's the only thing that has been used. But what I'm trying to tell you is this. Look at the association that we sit underneath. So when the media was good, covering the Sudanese refugee, and when the media turn against you, what can you learn from that? And my message here today, as Sudanese community, what can you do to change the status? And what can you tell service providers to help you change that message? And that is my conversation too with Akedebe, but also with its all Sudanese community. When you speak of uh, between two and five and now, at that time, and five, and until the other day, there was no lot of young people of South Sudanese background committing crime. Mm -hmm. We have to acknowledge, and for those of us who are working with the system, that young South Sudanese are actually well represented in terms of offending. Yes, I don't agree with how the data are collected, but we have to acknowledge that this is an issue that is actually happening. Until we acknowledge that, as a community, that we're not going to have those conversations that the commissioner before said, we need to acknowledge that there is an issue Regardless of what the media is reporting, we have to acknowledge that then what was used to happen before Liv's death and what is happening now. Like now you've got like young children as 14 committing crime, serious crime, which I'm happy to talk about before, but it was not the case in 205. So you cannot realistically compare when there was zero in 205 and when there is issues as of 2013. So we need to have those kind of open conversations when we are talking about these issues. I, I totally agree. And you are right. And that's what this graph is saying. When you look at the true numbers and you go out there and say, oh, we are just 1%. 1% of what? When you compare it per 1,000, then we end up being the worst case. And by the way, I'm telling you, if the media look at this, if the media look at it from a statistical point of view, like me, I think the coverage would have been even much worse. I'm telling you the truth. The media don't even understand data. But if they look at it the way I put it, it would be worse. So that means you are right, I agree with you. We have a problem. And that's why I'm saying, what do we learn from the statistic? And at the same time, let's go back one more step. 51% of people below the age of 24 are the one committing crime. And many of them are as young as 16, 14, as you say. Therefore, my question to the service providers most of those young people were, were born and are growing up here. What has gone wrong? And there's a lot of service providers. So where is the service providers failing? That is a paradox. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to commend uh, Dr. Jack uh, for his uh, presentation. Well done for looking at the statistics in, a, in different perspective. Uh, uh, it has been a confusing thing within the community. People use a different language within the community, and the argument is, you know, it go both sides, blaming and accepting and, 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 and all that. 
I think, uh, and this is a comment that I wanted to put uh, to you and also to other South Sudanese community who either consider themselves, uh, you know, a intellectual member or a community leaders, that would you be happy to launch a couple of presentation within the community to enlighten, to enlighten the community? Yes, we need to admit, as this young uh, young person say, we do have bad apple within our, our, our community or within our families and we need to, ac to accept that and we need to acknowledge that uh, unless we acknowledge and accept it we will we will not be able to address the the problem so you need to accept that yes i'm sick i need to go to the doctor and these are the symptoms and i want this symptom to go away so thank you for your presentation it is well uh, well prepared and uh, well pitched to the audience and uh, I would love to see you doing a couple of presentations so that you clear uh, the myths around uh, statistics. Yeah, absolutely, I'm more than happy to, this is my community, and to use the knowledge of data analytics to inform the community, I have no issues with that. It's just only when the forum and the platform is available. Mm -hmm. But thank you for listening, and I think any question, we'll address it during the Q and A time later this afternoon. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Joe. I want to ask on this conversation too with academic also within South Sudanese community. When you speak of uh, between two and five and now at that time, two and five and until the other day, there was no lot of young people of South Sudanese background committing crime. Mm -hmm. We have to acknowledge and for those of us who are working with the system, that young South Sudanese are actually well represented in terms of offending. Yes, I don't agree with how the data are collected, but we have to acknowledge that this is an issue that is actually happening. Until we acknowledge that, as a community, that we're not going to have those conversations that the commissioner before said, we need to acknowledge that there is an issue. Regardless of what the media is reporting, we have to acknowledge that. Then what was used to happen before Lev's death? And what is happening now? Like now you've got like young children as 14 committing crime, serious crime, which I'm happy to talk about before, but it was not the case in 205. So you cannot realistically compare when there was zero in 205 and when there's issues as of 2013. So we need to have those kind of open conversations when we are talking about these issues. I, I totally agree. And you are right. And that's why this graph is saying. When you look at the true numbers and you go out there and say, oh, we are just 1%. 1% of what? When you compare it per 1,000, then we end up being the worst case. And by the way, I'm telling you, if the media had look at this, if the media had look at it from a statistical point of view, like me, I think the coverage would have been even much worse. I'm telling you the truth. The media don't even understand data. But if they look at it the way I put it, it would be worse. So that means, you are right, I agree with you, we have a problem. And that's why I'm saying, what do we learn from the statistics? And at the same time, let's go back one more step. 51% of people below the age of 24 are the one committing crime. And many of them, as, as young as 16, 14, as you say. Therefore, my question to the service providers, most of those young people were, were born and are growing up here. What has gone wrong? And there's a lot of service providers. So where is the service providers failing? That is a paradox. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to commend uh, Dr. Jack uh, for his uh, presentation. Well done for looking at the statistics in a in different perspective. Uh, uh, it has been a confusing thing within the community. People use a different language within the community and the argument is you know it go both sides blaming and accepting and, and 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 all that i think uh, and this is a comment that i wanted to put uh, to you and also to other south sudanese community who either consider themselves uh you know a intellectual member or a community leaders that would you be happy to launch a couple of presentations within the community to enlighten, to enlighten the community. Yet we need to admit, as this young, uh, young person say, we do have bad 
uproar within our, our, our community or within our families. And we need to, to accept that and we need to acknowledge that. Uh, unless we acknowledge and accept it, we will, we will not be able to address the, the problem. So you need to accept that, yes, I'm sick, I need to go to the doctor, and these are the symptoms, and I want this symptom to go away. So thank you for your presentation. It is well, uh, well prepared and uh, well pitched to the audience. And uh, I would love to see you doing a couple of presentations so that you clear uh, the myths around uh, statistics. Yeah, absolutely. I'm more than happy to just my community and to use the knowledge of data analytics to inform the community. I have no issues with that. It's just only when the forum and the platform is available. But thank you for listening. And I think any question, we'll address it during the Q and A time later this afternoon. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Jones. Meet Kate Coleman. Kate Coleman's the CEO of the Social Studio in Collingwood, a fabulous place, and I'm glad we'll, we'll get to hear about it from Kate. Kate's been the CEO for the past year, but before that she worked for the Asylum Seeker Resource Centre for over a decade. So we welcome Kate to talk about the Social Studio. Thank you. Um, gosh, that was going to be um, tough to follow on from that um, presentation. Um, but anyway, I'll do my best. Um, hi everybody, my name is Kate. Um, thank you for the introduction. I am the CEO of the Social Studio. Thank you, Peter, for the um, invitation for me to speak today about my favourite subject. Um, so I, I really, um, I'll only um, speak for a couple of minutes. Um, I'm not an academic, so <laughs> um, I just really wanted to take this opportunity to talk a bit about the work that we do and to spread the word and to, um, yeah, I'll, I'll just say. All right, so the Social Studio is a awesome not-for-profit organisation that's located uh, in Collingwood, so here in Melbourne. Um, and everything that the Social Studio does is um, dedicated to creating opportunities and pathways to employment and further education for um, predominantly young people of refugee and new migrant backgrounds. Um, so the Social Studio was established 10 years ago, so this is our 10th birthday this year. Um, and it was created with the intention to celebrate the style and skills of Melbourne's refugee populations. Um, the social studio, we say that we use the vehicle of fashion to promote social cohesion. Um, and we believe that fashion, the arts, creativity um, is a, a really great way to show off people's culture, display a bit of their heritage. Um, and also we like to sort of counteract the negative stereotypes that can be peddled by the media about um, refugee youth. So, um, so how exactly do we create opportunities and pathways for our students? Um, we do that in a couple of ways. We run a fashion school. We, um, we also run a few fashion-based social enterprises. So we have a retail store, um, a fashion label and a manufacturing department. And it's all on the website in Collingwood on Smith Street, 128 Smith Street, if you want to come by and visit me. Um, so the reason I'm here today is really to spread the word about what we do. We're always looking for new students to enrol in our fashion school. Um, the current courses that we have on offer, um, we run a Certificate 3 in clothing production. It's run in partnership with RMIT. Um, and we also run social sewing classes for those who just want a bit of a taster session. Um, no experience is required. There's no requirements about English level or anything like that. Um, so if anyone knows of any creative, fashionable people, send them our way. Um, and it's also important to note that although we sort of um, you know, go on about the, the fashion angle and whatnot, a lot of the students who come through the social studio studying our, our courses don't then go on to become fashion designers or whatnot. It's just also a really um, great place for people to come, gather, create community, make friends, um, sort of learn a bit about getting work ready and things like that. So um, we work with all of our students to develop um, a bit of a plan and um, we discuss with students how the social studio can help them achieve their goals. Um, but the other thing to note is you also don't need to have hard goals in mind. You can just come and hang out in, in a safe place and learn to make some beautiful clothes. 
Um, there are no cost to students um, and all information and contact details are on our website and on our social media as well. So yeah, I just wanted to put the word out there that we're here and we'd love to meet with anybody who might be interested um, in getting creative with us. So that's all from me. Thank you guys. They call a super memo, uh, a super memo model is that if I repeat the same message which I'm saying today, in the next 10 days, you will retain that information. Your memory will be 90%. If I repeat it within 30 days, you will even retain almost slightly below 90, but above 80s. And if I do the same message within 90 days, your memory of the message will be complete. So by me they are repeating the same story, the Sudanese game, the bad guys, then you will be able to retrieve the information and the stability of your memory about that message is retained. Now, <clears throat> what I did, as I mentioned, we do the data mine and it's one of the services I've given. So I, the, the website, the internet is a full of resources, it's a, a worldwide database. So we use a Chrome web uh, scrapper, crawling, and look at all the media articles, the digital content, the TV, what has been covered about Sudanese gang. The same issue. And you see in 2007, when the tragic death of Liam Gone happened, there were 222. And the other people in academia have confirmed this as well. They, they arrived at the same conclusion. Over 200. Yep, we're done. And those over 200 build a bit of anti-immigration kind of message. The sentiment towards Sudanese was bad. And if you look across it, the media tend to cover things and the fear a repetition happened during election cycle. All this reporting period, there were one or election, either before or during that. So, <coughs> to conclude, as I mentioned before, how does it influence? If you look at the first phase of this graph, this is a statistic from the Australian Bureau of Statistics. It, it would say it over 27,000, as Dr. Sarah uh, said before. This is from ABS. So, during the first phase, in the 1990s, I look from 1996 all the way, the media. From 1996 to 2005, the media was favoring the Sudanese. All the messages going out were very good about us. So our immigration intake, the inflow was high. The numbers could be up, down, here and there. But look at the big picture as I finish. But it's starting from 205 all the way. The white line is the media increase in negative media. And the green line, the green line is the intake. So that's why I said before, it's like it's very important to look at it. If you just look at the bar graph, is the population increase. But look at the actual intake. <laughs> New Sudan, big news in your life, big panda near. Oh, on your good drone, a John got a gum of your back of bee, what ya, what ya? The dam on your yard, or a man of my beard, a dim back of bee, go you can go away, you did a panda, a burn bee. Nous 
what good boy, what let her get in? I tell me young, I think you have a book when you so done up a book. I could cool the pande. I wear your wear a young girl on my beard. Get your one, I get all good dog and then get the way you nang me with ya. Talk a young that you're mad or music. You know, talk a cool yalloon way. Victor Banya get all the way you do panda. Talk a young that you're mad or music. You know. Wakak kul jalun way, na boy ka gor at me yang atem ka kaya will be mi uwa do ni pinda at me yang atem anyo kuer buke janyo dole ne galam. Ya boy ka gor at me yang Dua <laughs> What good boy, lo ale re je ding. Ate me yang ate mi da be bo kwen. Ni uzu da na be du ga ke kul ke pande. Kate wan je ga nyuan ro re ke kindir. Ni uzu da na ni mari chang panda. Be ke wa wa ke kul ku mi ke na chila di ro ra ku chang da ku panda. Ti o ke mi de chang da be ke ya chaga mo to. Ti ke ba ni arbi a ku na ke kul ke pande ke ka ye ko de ke gara wen ku ba. Ne ale jangi randen ti jag no nga to no wer. E wa konya man a penya you wear the jacket konya John to na gela ta konya. What good boy lo ale re je ding atim mi yang atim mi da be bo kwen ni u Sudan a be duka ke kul ke pande. You know Sudan a pande ku cha be duka ke kul ke pande wo ni arbai. What good boy, lo ale re je ding atim mi yang atim. Mi da be bo kwen, mi u Sudan a be duka ke kul ke pande. You know Sudan a pande ku cha be duka ke kul ke pande wo ni arbai. What good boy, lo ale re je ding atim mi yang atim. Mi da be bo kwen, mi u Sudan a be duka ke kul ke pande.